Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to Bolt Banter. It's your boy Curtis here. Hey guys, and it's Kendrick, and we're going to recap the Chargers and Raiders. Chargers and Raiders. Where do we start? Uh, you hold on to the ball, maybe kick a field goal. That's somewhere to start. Wow. You don't turn over the ball, and you finish the game, and what do you know, the Chargers win. If we had said that to you every recap, you wouldn't think we were redundant, because if the Chargers could do those two things, we would be... Four and one? Could be undefeated, really. Wow! Wow, what a concept. But uh, we're gonna go through the pros and cons. Let's start with the cons, though. Um, for me, one of my keys of the game was the turnover, diff like basically not giving up the ball. And yeah, turnover differential. The Chargers yeah. aren't negative. That was, your, that was one of your main keys to the game. Huge key. And look at that, we were negative three for this one? Negative four? We took a couple away. The Raiders, but definitely, the Raiders definitely had some turnovers. We had uh two no four fumbles five if you count the last one with the field goal so five and a couple picks that's what i mean five okay. five turnovers five turnovers in total i got you, mm -hmm. got, you, got, you, got you three three fumbles and two interceptions so that's a lot dude how do you win a game with five turnovers that's really hard and we almost did and we talk about how enough. good melvin gordon's playing fumbled again late in the game tough 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 for the kid gates had a fumble but that was kind of like uh, yeah, that was kind of like rusty, but kind of like fluky. It was good he was in the game though. Um, what's another con from the game? You'd... Another con from the game for me would be, I think I feel like we, what's the word? The organization un underjudged how healthy our players were, and my players. I'm talking about Drew Kayser. I think Drew Kayser had a serious hip injury in this game, and I think that our training staff who I've spoken for many times, has misdiagnosed concussions. I think they misdiagnosed Drew Kayser's hip injury. I think he had so much discomfort that he absolutely botched that hold on that field goal. Another key to this game that I mentioned before, and unfortunately you called came, out Drew Kayser. Called it out before it even happened, unfortunately. Oh I wish I wouldn't even said anything. Terrible but. punt, gets hurt, and then botches the hold, man. I, I told Curtis after the game, I was like, why wasn't Kellen Clemens holding the ball? <laughs> but really, man, I mean. Yeah. He was not having a good game. You put and him out there to lose the game. It just, it bothers me. The Chargers training staff has bothered me, all, bothered me all season. And they continue to bother me. And another big con a lot of people are not in favor of was going for the field goal instead of going for it. Me, I personally think they could have gone for it, especially McCoy with his job possibly on the line. You're one and three, gotta make a statement. You know, make a statement on the road. Could change around the season if you, if you get it done. But at one point it was third and two. You may not ha even have had to worry about the fourth one had you yeah, got the first down. Gordon gets those two yards. And they were already moving. They're at the 15. They could have been, you know, drained the clock and been in the end zone, ended the game. For me, Curtis, Didn't we talked happen. about attitude and the statement of what this team is and their identity. And the statement of it was that Mike McCoy's Chargers play it safe. And if something happens, it's not his fault. It's just the curse of the Chargers. Mm -hmm. And to me, the statement would have been, my job is on the line. I highly doubt he heard the rumors this morning about his job, about him being fired on Thursday after the Broncos, that story yeah, he, that broke this morning. He denied the report. Highly doubt that he even listened to those reports. But if you know that it's crunch time and go time, and dude, they ran an awesome fullback dive with Chris Watt. Derek Watt, I always mess it up. Is it Derek? Derek Watt, sorry. Yeah. But yeah, Derek Watt had an awesome fullback dive. He could have run that again. He could have had, just pumped it to Gordon again. Like, I'm sorry, but the Raiders D-line, we were able to push them. We were able to get a good amount. I thought Carl Joseph showed up today for the Raiders defense. That's the guy who showed up. But yeah, man, I thought, I just thought we didn't finish the game how we should have. Yeah, we even were behind this time, which was a rarity compared to other games. We were coming from behind and we almost came back and won. Almost did it. Three minutes um, to go in the game. The Chargers had an 80% chance to win. That's when they were moving, man. They were moving downfield so There's a great article on smoothly. ESPN right now that goes from 2016 games, the win differential we had above 78%, into 2015, where those games we blew against the Steelers, Ravens, teams like that, we had 80% win differentials for those. Crazy. Crazy. I mean, uh, one thing I want to point out, too, is the defense gave up a lot of points today. Well, I'll go back on that pro for them later, but 
34 points. I mean, Fred and Flowers out, you expect them to just rack it up. 34 points, man. That's a it. lot. That's a lot. Perryman was out too. Um, what was I going to say? All right, that's all the cons I can think of right now anymore for you. Nope. Let's go into pros. Pros, okay. Pros. Gordon had a better average. Uh, the balance between pass and run was great. Pretty even. It's just turnovers. Our offense would have executed if we hadn't been turning over the we, ball. Yeah, we had, we picked Carr off, which was good. Like, we got to him, like another key I mentioned. Brandon Meebane, what up, though? And Bosa showed up. Two sacks for the game. Let's First just, NFL let's say right now, game. This is the major pro. Like, for all the things Huge. we said about Bosa, yeah. we've been on this show, have said, we're ignoring the Joey Bosa talk. We're ignoring the trash talk until he hits the field. And Joey Bosa played up to the potential mm -hmm. of what Tom Telesco drafted him for. Two sacks and six tackles? Five. Dude. Yeah. He looked great. And him and Melvin Ingram just had this charisma to them, rushing on the sides. Him and Corey Legion and Brandon Mimi are partying. These guys have completely supported Joey Bosa being out there, and he showed up. And like I told you guys on this show, and Curtis talked about it too, is he going to be a Quentin Jam or is he going to be a Sean Merriman? It's only one game, but he's already having Sean Merriman impact. Definitely, and, you know, if we're being honest, Kendrick and I weren't the biggest fans of Bosa from the beginning. No, you can go watch You can go watch our reaction to the draft video wasn't if you great. want to go back to that one. Kendrick hated it more than I did, but that's okay. Um, that being said, I was shocked after coming off of a contract dispute and a hamstring injury where just this past week he had his first three full practices with his team and he performed the way he did that speaks so highly of the athlete he is and the, and the physical shape to the, the physical potential of being the number one defensive yes, player and in the, draft. the physical shape he was in all off season you know what i mean he didn't lose a step he was in shape and it showed today it's true yep joey bosa did not skimp out on his workouts in his show he was mm -hmm. nfl ready today oh he was two sacks all right pros man um we almost had it. I don't know. Last one for me, Curtis, is that Philip Rivers threw four touchdowns today. But somehow, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, Philip Rivers and that debauchery of an offensive line continue to absolutely run rampage on the NFL and whatever defense you are. Yeah, I mean, relatively speaking, they're, they're staying healthy compared to last year. I mean, Barksdale gets banged up every now and then. Franklin. Dunlap's having a hard time. Yep, they'll, they'll get banged up. But, man, overall, it's a lot better than last year. But what, I, what I'm going to say is, what a weird loss where it comes down to a field goal and one guy, one guy screws it up. Strange. Sad. Strange and sad. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really all I got. Um, a lot of people are giving McCoy a hard time on the fourth and one call, as they deserve to. But then again, McCoy didn't fumble the ball for the field goal, which could have sent it in overtime nor did he not fail to convert the third down conversion to make it a first down on the, say, 15-yard line with two minutes left, which would have put the Chargers in a great position to win the game. So let us know. My question for you guys in the comments I already asked on Twitter, and it was leaning a little more towards Kayser at the moment. Who would you want to see go first, our punter Kayser or Coach McCoy? So let us know in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. And we'll see you guys for the preview of the Broncos game coming up real quick here on Thursday. Four days away from Four some Charger away. football, and we're going to have some more to talk about Mike McCoy. But we'll save that for next time. Bolt right. up, San Diego. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.